All these scientific studies served as evidence and made me and millions of people out there believe that you cannot spot reduced body fats. What's going on YouTube, it's Jason, and in this video, we are going to be answering the question, can you spot reduced fat? I.e., if you had flabby bingo wings or love handles, can you lose fat off just that one place? Now, I mean this when I say the answer may surprise you, and this is absolutely not clickbait. Matter of fact, I didn't even want to make this video. For years and years and years, I've been made to believe that you cannot spot reduced body fat under any circumstances. And there's even scientific evidence to back that up. Mm, but I'm a science-based personal trainer, meaning that I'm committed to staying up to date on all scientific evidence on things like training, nutrition, muscle mass, and body fat. And we now have that study that throws this all into question. So before we go into the most recent guidance, where did we first get this idea that you can't spot reduced body fat? Well, there were three main studies. The first study done in 1983 had people doing, get this, 5,000 sit-ups over 27 days to see if it makes a difference to the body fat around their stomach. And at the end of the study, they measured the size and the thickness of their fat cells and they realized that after all of those sit-ups, there was no difference. The second study in 2011 had 24 people, all healthy, but living a sedentary lifestyle, break off into two groups. One group did seven exercises for two sets of 10, five days a week for six weeks and the other group did absolutely nothing. At the end of the six weeks, they measured the belly fat of both groups and there was no difference between the groups. So the final study literally had people training one leg for 12 weeks, three times a week. And then at the end of the study, they measured the muscle mass and the body fat and they found that the leg that they were training for the 12 weeks didn't gain any more muscle mass and didn't change in body fat versus the opposite untrained leg. All these scientific studies served as evidence and made me and millions of people out there believe that you cannot spot reduced body fat. So the breakthrough study which challenged my viewpoint and made me question everything I knew on this topic up to date was a study done last year that involved 16 people. Eight of them did two exercises, so ab crunches and ab rotations, and 27 minutes of exercise, slightly faster running. The other group did no ab exercises and 45 minutes of treadmill work. And the group that did two ab exercises actually ended up losing more of their body fat on their stomach. And the group that did just the treadmill running for 45 minutes lost more body fat on their legs. And both groups lost an equal amount of total body fat. So let's look a little deeper into the study. On the face of it, it looks like you can spot reduced fat, but what are the main criticisms of this study? Well, number one, the group that did the ab exercises with 27 minutes of cardio were actually more overweight and had more body fat than the other group. And so somebody could argue that the reason they lost more of their stomach was because they were more obese and essentially past a certain point, when people are really overweight, they tend to store more body fat on their stomach. Criticism number two is that they didn't track their nutrition. I think this is a valid point in that, you know, we don't know how many calories that either group were consuming and therefore how many calories they were actually in a deficit. But from my perspective, I don't think this criticism is just because at the end of the day, they lost the same amount of fat over the course of the study. So how many calories they were consuming must have been proportionate to their maintenance and they must have been in a similar deficit, I'm assuming. So I don't really think that changes the results of the study. But yeah, all of that being said, what can we take away from this study and what does this practically mean for us? Point number one, in order to lose body fat, whether you can spot reduce or not, you must be in a calorie deficit. That means either eating less or burning more, then your body needs to maintain itself. And this is where, to be honest, a lot of the previous studies failed. They made people do the ab exercises, for example, in 1983 and 2011, but the people didn't actually lose any body fat. Therefore, they weren't in a caloric deficit. If you are not in a caloric deficit, in 99.9% .9 of cases, you're not gonna lose body fat, so even if you could spot reduce, you would never know. 
Point number two is that if you could spot reduced fat, there is something about training the muscle group in question and then following up with cardio, specifically HIIT cardio. A lot of the previous studies that failed to prove spot reduction didn't actually follow up with cardio. All they did was made their subjects do the ab exercises. So yeah, if it does work, you're gonna to need to do the ab exercise or the tricep exercise if you wanna get rid of your bingo wings, and then you're gonna to have to follow up with cardio. And not just like two to three minutes of cardio, like a slow walk or something like that, but proper cardio of like 20, 25, or even 30 minutes. And finally, point number three is that nutrition is still the primary driver of any body fat changes. The same rules still apply. There is no way of like doing a million and one reps on one muscle group and just hoping that you're gonna get more toned. It doesn't really work that way. And we saw that in the first study where the people did 5,000 sit-ups over 27 days. That is a lot of sit-ups. If there was a way that you could just do exercise, not be in a calorie deficit, not watch your nutrition and just get more defined, 5,000 repetitions, you would have done it that way. So to sum it up, has my opinion changed? Would I advise clients differently after this study? I would say no, nutrition is still majority of the equation for me and is still the primary driver of any body fat change. You can't just do a million repetitions of one thing and hope for the best. That's a shortcut. You still do need to do the hard yards and make sure that you are objectively in a deficit. So you are either losing weight and or your waist is changing and all your clothes are feeling looser. If you want to get rid of a stubborn area of body fat, you need to go for a strategy that reduces your body fat as a whole. That being said, after this study on my rest days, you know, now I'm gonna shred myself, I will do my ab exercises as normal, but I may do cardio immediately after, just in case it was a thing, you know, where you could potentially lose more body fat in your stomach or the area that you are struggling with, then, you know, I wanna make those gains, but I see it as more of a bonus, you know, on the back of an already effective fat loss strategy. If you're someone that has a stubborn body fat area and you're struggling to lose body fat and you would like more information about coaching, please click the link below for more information. But yeah, that's everything. Hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Don't forget to like it if you did. Subscribe to my channel to follow me on this journey and I'll see you again soon.